All right. Well, this is a very special time of Partners Outdoors. This is going back now uh, up, up to the, or the roots of Partners Outdoors. As we got together, one of the things that the leaders of the federal agency told us at the American Recreation Coalition is that the power of patting somebody on the back, of congratulating people, about putting them in the spotlight and saying thanks for the hard work you're up to is a very important role for those of us in the private sector to be able to undertake. So beginning back more than 20 years ago, the American Recreation Coalition began a tradition of, of recognizing legends during, great, during the meeting of Partners Outdoors, great people who are doing wonderful things, sometimes with very little in the way of thanks, out there across this nation. The awards are, are uh, to extraordinary individuals. Uh, sometimes it's, it's a lifetime achievement award. Sometimes it's a younger member of the staff who is rising rapidly, embracing the concepts of partnerships, and not looking to what's written within the manual of the agency to try to, to look for guidance, but simply knowing it's the right thing to do. We have Legend Award winners among us here in this room, and we will surely have some of you who are here who will qualify for future Legends Award recipients. But today we recognize seven individuals who deserve our, our combined community applause for everything that they have done. Um, I'll arbitrarily be starting with the Bureau of Land Management, um, and we will uh, proceed through. So in order to, to make the, the presentation, I would like to invite the acting director of the Bureau of Land Management, Mike Ned, to join me for the presentation and to also ask Chris Dent, the honoree for the Bureau of Land Management this year, to be able to come forward as well. Let me tell you a little bit. I think it's right here. Chris Dent has been a uh, when we come up on stage here and we'll uh, – Chris Dent has been an outdoor recreation planner with the Bureau of Land Management for 18 years after spending 17 years with the Forest Service. He currently serves as the Recreation and Rivers Program Lead in the Oregon-Washington Regional Office. Driven by a strong passion for rivers and, and angling, he has been instrumental in providing leadership and direction for some of the most iconic – recreation sites and designated wild and scenic river systems throughout the Bureau of Land Management. For example, as the river management of Oregon's Rogue River, he successfully implemented partnerships to improve public facilities for both river users and permittees. He improved public safety, created a more fr family-friendly environment, and he led the team that created and publicized a new permit lottery system that served more than 6,600 customers in its first draw, a new record. In his current role as the Oregon State Lead for Recreation and Wild and Scenic Rivers, he's been instrumental in assisting staff throughout the region in administering permitting systems with an eye towards improving quality, fairness, and access to public lands. He's also been instrumental in designing and implementing a process for collecting recreation data to improve information about and access to public lands and waters. He's a member of the interagency Wild and Scenic Rivers Review Team, responsible for evaluating the management of these congressionally designated rivers to ensure that they are both protected and enhanced. He also plays a key role on the National Wild and Scenic River Training Development Team working to develop national level training curriculum. Previously, he served as chair of the National Recreation and Visitor Services Advisory Team, where he was responsible for working with the BLM's executive leadership to move the agency's recreation program into a new arena, one that is focusing on connecting with communities and empowering and developing a new era of recreation professionals. He's been an important mentor to numerous individuals within the recreation and river programs for both the BLM and the Forest Service, and is a strong believer in training 
and partnerships. He is also an advocate for opportunities for young people in the natural resources field. Widely, res widely respected as a river expert, Chris has amazing leadership abilities and is always willing to go the extra mile to help someone improve the recreation and river programs on public waters and the opportunities they provide. We're proud indeed to recognize Chris as the BLM 2017 Legends Award winner. And we understand that Tanya is here as well to celebrate this honor. Tanya, where are you? Do you want to come up here too? <laughs> Chris, do you want to tell Tanya to come up here or are you going to let her? <laughs> well, Tanya, we thank you because we know that you've been part of this, this Chris advocacy urging him on and, uh, and, and allowing him to be absent probably from some important things that you would have rather had him be there. But Chris, we thank you. And with that, let's bring this over. Well, certainly would, but let me correct something. I see Leslie sitting here and Jim. He said, arbitrarily, we picked BLM first. It wasn't arbitrarily. Anyway. <laughs> no, certainly thanks, Chris. Um, Derek, you said a number of the things that I wanted to say, but nonetheless, your mentorship and your passion for um, leading has been very notable. And you're recognized in your office as a leaders among leaders. So thank you for the wonderful work. Certainly BLM, look forward to working or having more employees like you and you being a strong part of BLM. I call the BLM strong employees. So give them a round of applause. So I'm not sure who really wrote everything you guys heard. So I'm gonna give you two quick stories that'll, that'll tell you the real side of me. And, and the first thing is, you know, growing up in Oregon, I had the, well, the luxury to, uh, uh, have all those rivers, and uh, I've spent thousands and thousands of hours fishing for salmon and steelhead. That's one of my passions, my personal passions. And as you can imagine, every time my wife and I, Tanya, um, meet with folks or hang out with friends, eventually my stories start going, my embellishments start going to our, our angling. And uh, somewhere along the line, she finally taught me to uh, bring me back down to the ground. And she always, partway through the conversation, goes, do you guys really know what the definition of an angler is? And of course, most folks go, yeah, it's somebody that fishes. My wife goes, no, it's a jerk at one end of the line waiting for a jerk at the other end of the line. <laughs> so yeah, she brings me back down. Maybe a more relevant story about the BLM is when I was a river manager on the Rogue in 2006, we had a fire where for the first time, we might have to close the river. And of course, I worked with 38 commercial companies, outfitters, and hundreds of private boaters. There was a lot of concern. We did close the river for nine days. I was an integral part of that. Wrote the communication plan, the evacuation plan, et cetera. And uh, we closed it, things went well. Um, and then a couple years ago, they faced the same thing. And there was a public meeting with the incident command team and the agency representatives there. And, and uh, the whole outfitter community was there, the whole private boating community was there. And, they kept saying, well, when Chris was here, we did it this way. And, you know, this is 10 years before. And uh, finally, one of the agency reps says, well, I, I'm sorry, but uh, St. Chris is not here today. <laughs> Anyways, I wasn't there. But two days later, all these people started calling me. Do you know you're St. Chris? You're St. Chris on the Rogue. And, and uh, so I went home and I told Tanya, I said, hey, I'm a legend on the Rogue. And, of course, she came back with only in your mind, but you're wrong, baby. <laughs> And then last, I'd like to thank Derek and ARC, our acting director, Mike Ned, Andy Tenney, some of his staff, uh, Dave Ballinger, 
and uh, uh, Zach Jarrett and all the other BLM peers across the states that uh, supported this nomination. And uh, I'm five weeks away from a 35 year culmination of my career, so thank you and I appreciate this. Well, as long as you're going to be serving as a mentor for five more weeks, let's see now. Who has a vacancy on their calendar to head out and, and be on the river with Chris over the next five weeks? I think I can find some time. Chris, congratulations and thank you. And now we'd like to turn to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and we are, are, are honored to have the acting director, Jim Kurth, with us, as well as the deputy director, Steve Gurton. Uh, and we have the Assistant Director for Fisheries Resources, David Hoskins, the Deputy Assistant Director for Fisheries, John Sh uh, Schmerfeld, and Stephen Davenport, the Supervisor of Fisheries, Fisheries Biologist for the agency's New Mexico Fish and Wildlife Service Agency, all to say thank you and congratulations to one person, Angela James. So let's get everybody up on stage. There's room for us all, and we'll put Angela in the middle. So congratulations, Angela. Okay. Okay, well, well, all those other people were supposed to be here, but that's okay because we're going to make up and cheer for all of them too. <clears throat> Let me tell you about Angela James. Angela is the Outreach and Education Coordinator for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's New Mexico Fish and Wildlife Conservation Office in Albuquerque. In that position, she's demonstrated great dedication to outreach and education while setting a high standard for achievement and a work ethic that's an example to all of her coworkers. In 2011, Angela started a national fish in the classroom program targeted to fourth and fifth grade elementary school students. This outreach program connects children to real life fish and wildlife conservation issues and inspires them to seek solutions to the problems they encounter. The students raise native fishes, fish in their classroom, learning the value of science, conservation, mathematics, <coughs> and aquatic system health at the same time. An introduction to native fish species lays out the program and is followed by information on fish anatomy. Students learn why and how fish surveys are completed in the how many fish segment and are also introduced to native ranges of cutthroat, trout, tagging and monitoring, and the impacts of humans on aquatic environments in the segment entitled The Case of the Missing Cutthroats and Eco Mystery. <coughs> the program closes out with the students reflecting on what they have learned in a poetry writing contest, Time to Say Goodbye. The top three winners of the writing contest had their poems read by all the students just after releasing their fish into the Rio Grande River. In six years, Angela has guided this program to significant success. The initial four schools in the program have grown to 10, including four Title I schools with 18 teachers and 429 students participating. Although this program is just one of the many lengths that Angela uses to introduce students to their natural surroundings, it provides the foundation for other conservation learning. The process of raising native fish in a classroom setting, then releasing the fish into a wild river, is often the first interaction that these students have with a native fish or with the river that is in their backyard. The experiences formed in this program have the very real possibility of transforming these students into conservation-aware citizen adults. For taking on this transformational challenge, we're very pleased to recognize Angela James as the 2017 Fish and Wildlife Service Legends Award winner. Congratulations, Angela. Can you give me a water?
congratulations. You know, I think about the kids that live around here and how the few of them learn about nature. They put a bird feeder up and they learn about squirrels, right? <laughs> but what do they have to learn about fish? A goldfish or tropical fish. And the idea of bringing native fishes into a classroom to me is so cool because, well, maybe some of the kids here can tell a robin from a cardinal. They have no idea about the fishes of the Potomac. And of course, these fish are such important indicators of the health of our ecosystems and the waterway is so vital to our life and that you've found a way to draw those kids in, to be fascinated with actually seeing those native fishes and then helping restore them into their natural habitat is just really cool. How innovative, how important, and I couldn't be prouder of you. Thank you, Angela. So great. Quickly, I'd like to thank Angela for all of her hard work. She's been with our office for about nine years now. And she began as a fish biologist. She's a scientist. And she was tasked with taking over this program. And she was just a natural at it. It's amazing to see Angela working with the students and with the teachers and with the community. And she's um, out, outdone all of our expectations um, in this role. And I'd like to thank her for all of her hard work. Um, very humbled to um, accept this award, uh, especially in the presence of so many amazing people who are doing amazing things out on the uh, the ground. You know, listening to everybody's stories, all the all the projects and the programs that are going on, um, it's a very humbling to accept this. Uh, definitely would not happened. This program wouldn't have happened without the the major support from my office, the New Mexico Fish and Wildlife Conservation Office. Best field office, long title, in short, it's our fisheries field office for the state of New Mexico, and without them, definitely wouldn't have happened. As well as the teachers, um, you know, it's pretty much a national thing across the board where teachers are, are stricken with time restrictions across the board, and to um, them feel that it's worthy enough to be in their classroom and take it on um, for, you know, five months at a time out of their year. They're willing to have these fish in their classrooms. And, of course, the dedication of the students who um, take on and tackle the responsibility and the, the caretaking of these fish, and they take a lot of pride and ownership in it. And uh, without them out there, yeah, this would not have happened. So I thank them all. Congratulations. Well, congratulations and thanks, Angela, as I just see the integration of science and poetry and, and just making something relevant to these kids. You're changing lives. 429 this year, and when you multiply that by the number of years you've been at it, and you will be at it, that is making, making a real difference. Congratulations and thank you. All right, now let's turn to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and I'm delighted to ask Mary Colon, the Chief of Natural Resources Management, uh, as well as our honoree Kenneth Day, to join me for the presentation. Let's talk about Ken. Ken is the Chief of the Natural Resources Section for the Mobile District of the South Atlantic Division of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Ken's unwavering dedication to ensuring the preservation and improvement of recreation resources in the district and throughout the region has resulted in major improvements to both the Corps' recreation and natural resource management programs. Throughout 39 years of service, Ken has worked toward one goal, ensuring rangers in the field have the tools they need to maximize the environmental, social, health, and economic benefits to maximize, to, to, for the visiting public and to improve efficiencies within the natural resources program. His willingness to develop and share innovative ideas has had a profound effect on the recreation management community. For example, his forward thinking about finding better ways to measure the cost of operating recreation areas in the district led directly to the development of a tool that would capture similar data on a national level. His work with managers to develop volunteer villages that provide a communal living area 
for volunteers at Core Lakes open up valuable campsites for the public. Ken also continually strives to recruit minorities to the natural resources programs and led the team that developed and implemented an innovative recruitment initiative that allowed the district to successfully compete with the private sector in hiring minorities into natural resource programs. In addition, he has a long-standing relationship with one of the Corps' national partners, the Boy Scouts of America. And despite being the father to two girls, served as the scoutmaster for the local group in Daphne, Alabama. A leader in his community, Ken has served as chairman of the Daphne Planning Commission for eight years and as chairman of the local water authority. Ken's contributions go far beyond the successful implementation of, an, of improvements and efficiencies in the South Atlantic Division's recreation programs and service to his community. His legacy is the mentoring and development of recreation professionals. Ken's influence, professional demeanor, and ability to recruit recreation and environmental stewardship leaders are recognized throughout the Corps. He leaves as his legacy the positive impact he has made in mentoring dedicated recreation professionals and delivering quality recreation opportunities which will continue to be enjoyed by millions of visitors for years to come, we are honored to present Ken Day with the 2017 ARC Legends Award for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. I can't tell you what an honor it is to um, have you here, Ken, and to recognize you as uh, one of the Corps of Engineers legends. Um, and he truly is a legend in his own time. Um, he has done so much for the Corps of Engineers in so many ways. You heard um, technically mentoring, um, being a role model for so many people. One other thing that uh, wasn't mentioned there is Ken's a forester, and uh, we share uh, a little bit of that in our um, other lives that go way back. And, and so he brings science along with that uh, recreation and public uh, interface that they all do. Um, Ken, thank you for 39 years of um, service to the American public. So thank you. I guess I'd like to explain. And to paraphrase a phrase I often heard from my daughters when they were growing up, I'm here on an accident. <laughs> I was simply going about doing my job, trying to respond to the challenges that uh, we all have to face. Got the pleasure of working with a wonderful team, and uh, somehow or another they figured that maybe I had some minor contributions to a number of successes that they could identify. And I guess that in itself would have been okay, you know, just to make note that we've had some successes together. But unbeknownst to me, that was this conspiracy toiling around me <laughs> of my co-workers, peers, family, and fraternity to put together this nomination packages. And who would have thunk it? It ended up, you know, I guess rising to the top and uh, being worthy. Uh, but but on, on a more serious note, as, as I look back at all the, just, just the folks within the Mobile District who've been honored in this fashion, you know, it's only a humbling experience. And I've been around 40 years now, and I've, I've had the pleasure of working with each of them personally. Mr. Doug Blunt, who stood up recreation on the Tennessee Tom Beebe Waterway. You know, Mr. David Grabenstetter, who uh, at, at Alatoona Lake was the first uh, project to receive the Chief of Engineers Award as Project of the Year. I also know him as taking a very risky decision 40 years ago when he offered a job to this broke student at Auburn University who had yet to pass his first class in his declared major. I'm still trying to make him not regret that decision, <laughs> even at this stage. And then the widely known Mr. Irvin Topper at Lake Sidney Lanier, who, who's known for uh, training his staff members to go on to achieve leadership positions throughout the agency. 
And just to recognize those stellar individuals who uh, come before me within the Corps of Engineers, it's truly a humbling experience. It is truly an honor, and thank you. <laughs> I think we need to have a All right, and let's now turn to the National Park Service, and I understand that um, we're going to ask Bob Radcliffe, the Chief of the Park Service Conservation and Outdoor Recreation Division, to help me present the Legends Award for the Park Service to Susan Overson. So would Bob and Susan both join me up here? <clears throat> Susan's a landscape architect and park planner with the Park Service's Mississippi National River and Recreation Area, a 72-mile corridor within the central core of the Minneapolis-St. Paul metropolitan area. Susan's dedicated to providing quality recreational access to the Mississippi River through her tireless efforts working with 27 local units of government, several regional park management agencies, and a multitude of for-profit and not-for-profit organizations, access to the Mississippi River no longer requires personal ownership of a watercraft or access to an outfitter. Her vision was to create a paddle share system that would operate in much the same way as the nice ride bike share system does in the Mississippi NRRA. For more than two years, Susan led the effort to develop the concept align a network of partners, secure funding, and address the many logistical user safety and operational concerns that are inherent in such an ambitious undertaking. In August 2016, as part of the celebration of the National Park Service Centennial, the first kayak rental stations were op opened, offering several options for paddlers to rent a kayak and either return it to the same or another location along this corridor. The paddle share system was designed to integrate with the nice ride bike share system located on the trail system that parallels the river, making it possible to switch from one system to the other. This integrated concept is a component of the park's alternative transportation system, a seamless network of bus, light rail, high speed rail, bike trails, and now paddle share facilities owned and operated by the partners. The initial rental stations were located in low to moderate income neighborhoods in Minneapolis, thereby providing opportunities for individuals and families to enjoy on-river activities without the expenses associated with equipment ownership. Several options are now under consideration for expanding the system, and Susan continues to lead the way with the recruitment of new partners. Susan's visionary paddle share success is, new, is no anomaly. For 20 years, she's coordinated the Trails and Open Space Partnership, an informal coalition of over 50 regional, state, and national organizations involved in trail and open space planning and development along the Mississippi River in the Twin Cities metropolitan area. We're delighted to recognize Susan's vision, energy, dedication to partnerships and passion for enhancing access to wonderful outdoor recreation experiences with the 2017 Legends Award for the National Park Service. And before we do this, I just want to say that it's so important to us that as we recognize Susan, so many of her family and friends are here. Uh, we especially welcome uh, your brother and sister-in-law, uh, sister Rich and Kim Klein, and your husband, Mark, I, I think are we back over here? We thank you for coming to help us celebrate all that Susan is doing to make access to the Mississippi River a reality for so many. So with that, congratulations and thanks.
All right. Well, first of all, Bob, are you proud? I am so proud. Actually, I'm really thrilled as a, as a river, old river guide and a river lover. I can't, uh, you know, express my gratitude enough to make rivers so accessible and equitable for people who live in urban centers. And the pioneering work that Susan did is really extraordinary and exemplifies what we think is modern 21st century conservation. Everything you do is in collaboration with others, everything. Imagine how hard that is all the time. And providing this access and pioneering something, how many times were you told this couldn't be done? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, didn't take no for an answer, can do attitude, and I want to thank you for that because you've made uh, an example, actually a model that many others are now talking about doing in other cities and other locations. So she pioneered a brand new way to enjoy the outdoors in our urban centers. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm very humbled, just like the people that standing before me and who are going to follow me today. I thought getting my 25-year pin was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and you do do everything big in Washington, D.C., so... Well, we do when they are big heroes. Well, and my husband has a rule, no new artwork on the wall, so we're going to have to figure that one out. <laughs> Ceilings. Yeah, but I, I do want to say that I am very flattered and very humbled to receive this award. There were a lot of hoops to jump through. So I'm especially proud of the National Park Service for letting me think outside the box and supporting this project. And I think that's what it takes for all of us these days to be creative and to work in partnership with others and get through the bureaucracy and the red tape and the, the nose on the phone and the hoops that you have to jump through to, to do these kinds of things. But I work for a great park, the Mississippi National River and Recreation Area. And the reason it's a great project is because of that park. We don't own or manage any of our land. We have to do everything through partnerships. I have great partners, a couple of who are here today, REI and the National Park Foundation, that were not only willing to support the project, but take the risk for a first of its kind in a national park, i.e. guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, hopefully others will learn from that. Um, but I think the thing that flattered me the most and um, is one of my coworkers saying that I am creating an opportunity for making the Mississippi River a paddle destination, which most people don't think of that river as a recreational amenity. And if we can all do that, that's what it's all about. That's our job, is to get people to our parks, to our rivers, to our mountains, and create that outdoor experience for people to enjoy our park. So I am so proud to be a National Park Service employee. Um, I want to thank my husband, who has stuck by me through it all. He deserves the award just as much as I do <laughs> for the late nights, honey, and no dinners. And, oh no, we lost the funding again stories. <laughs> so thank you all so much for inviting me here and for nominating me. I'm very, very flattered and honored to be a part of it. Thank you. Susan, one little request. I'm not sure when your flight to the Twin Cities takes off, but we have this little trail that goes down to Mount Vernon, and we have a river called the Potomac, we have a bike share program here in D.C. Would you put together a little kayak, you know, share a kayak program for the Potomac River before you leave? I would love to, but um, my husband would have to float home. <laughs> Thank you and Thank congratulations. All right, we're going to turn now to the Bureau of Reclamation, and I'd like to ask the Bureau's Deputy Commissioner for Policy Administration and Budget, Gray Payne, to join me in honoring the Bureau's 2017 Legends Awarder, Scott Hettinger. And so, Scott, if you would come up as well. Let me tell you a little bit about Scott. Scott has been an outdoor recreation planner for the Bureau of Reclamation's Dakota's Area Office since 2004. He joined Reclamation as a biological technician 
after earning his degree in park management from South Dakota State University and serving two years as a park ranger for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. He was promoted to natural resource specialist in 1996, where he was responsible for the office's wetlands program and environmental compliance until taking on his current role. Scott has been instrumental in the successful management, administration, and development of public recreational facilities at reservoirs in South Dakota, Wyoming, and North Dakota. He's an outdoor enthusiast and devoted family man who loves watching, coaching, and assisting with his two children's sports teams. Those passions strengthen and complement his common sense approach to recreation planning and management. Um, under his leadership, two new managing partnerships have been established and recreations partnerships have been strengthened not only with South Dakota Game Fish and Parks and the Wyoming State Parks Historic Trails and Sites agencies, but also with numerous federal and local government and private sector partners, as well as concessioners, irrigators, and the local public. These relationships continue to thrive and flourish because Scott implements a professional approach. He sets a positive tone and is always mindful of the needs of the agency's many partners, respecting their role in the process to meet mutual goals. Scott's professionalism, common sense approach, and easygoing demeanor are recognized as important assets to everyone who comes into contact with him. He fully embraces the agency's forward-thinking approach to improving recreational facilities and public opportunities on recreation lands and waters by collaborating with and communicating with all stakeholders. He implements a professional approach when working through controversial issues, setting the standard for handling these tough choices. Scott's a positive role model who works hard, has a great attitude, looks for positive solutions, and helps anyone who asks. We are delighted to recognize Scott Hedinger as the Bureau of Reclamation's 2017 Legends Award winner, and we'd also like to recognize Scott's family, wife Teresa and children Samantha and Jake, who are here to join us in honoring Scott, Scott as well as his supervisor, Joe Hall, who's here with his wife, Jennifer. So we are delighted to have family and immediate employees join us here today as we as a community honor our, our wonderful 2017 legend, Scott. Congratulations. So when I was asked to do this, I had to, I wanted to read up about it and understand what he was doing. And the minute I saw North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wyoming, and I saw the words recreational facilities, I realized we were doing, dealing with some very strong-minded people up there and trying to build partnerships, especially multiple partnerships with state, local, and private groups is like herding cats at times. And so I asked some people, I asked, give me some words that really reflect Scott and what he's all about. And it was work ethic, it was collaboration, it was building partnerships, and the last word was common sense. And I think you can't have any of this success without common sense. Oh, and there was one more, and it was trust. Nobody's going to build a partnership if they don't trust you. And that's exactly what we have in Scott. And the Bureau of Reclamation is very, very honored that he was a ch chosen and for the work he's done up there. Thank you, Scott. Right. Thank you. Would you like to say something, Scott? Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say I'm honored to be here and with all of you in the room. It's truly an honor. Um, I'd like to thank everybody involved with my nomination. It was totally secret, had no clues. 
very surprised. Um, I'd just like to say I'm proud to be part of the reclamation team. I mean, everything he listed accomplishments is not done by one person. It's accomplished by a great team. And uh, being successful does, it helps to hit with partnerships because with our limited authorities, uh, when we partner with other entities, we can get so much more done and provide so much more for the general public um, to um, make a better recreation experience. Thank you. Congratulations, Scott. Thanks. Thank you. This is fun. This is really fun. What, what wonderful, wonderful colleagues we have. I mean, it's just so exciting. Let's turn now to the Federal Highway Administration. And uh, for the, the award in 2017, we're delighted to honor Lane Patton. And we ask Christopher Dallas, who manages the Recreational Trails Program and Transportation Alternatives for the Federal Aid Highway Program, to join me on the stage. Lane Patton is the Realty Officer for the Federal Highway Administration's Arizona Division. He's been with the Federal Highway Administration since 2000 and the Arizona Division since 2004, although his primary responsibility has been as Realty Officer he has also been FHWA's contact for TE, Transportation Enhancements, and, and Transportation Alternatives, as well as the Recreational Trails Program and the National Scenic Byways Program. Lane ensures the integrity of federal funding for transportation and recreational trail projects throughout Arizona, a significant responsibility involving all kinds of money since fiscal year 2005, the obligation of about 170 million in TE and TA funds, 150 projects, and then 14 million for RTP funds for 200 projects, and 5 million in byways projects uh, within Arizona. He's worked with the state and with FHWA headquarters to resolve federal aid highway program eligibility questions and to ensure that projects that use federal aid funds re remain open for public use and are not converted to private uses. He's also worked with tribal nations to build their capacity to participate in federal aid programs and to implement projects that lead to improved access to tribal resources, including economic opportunities related to scenic byways and trails. Lane has helped influence national policy for the Recreational Trails Program, TE, now Transportation Alternatives, and the Scenic Byways Program, serving as a good sounding board to vet policy proposals and ground truth policy application and consequences. Lane has been engaged in several activities involving the Recreational Trails Program in particular. He helped facilitate the National Trails Conference when it was held in Arizona. He's long participated in a state trails committee and an annual meeting specific to the federal RTP program. One of his recent contributions was to conduct a review of the entire, entire Arizona RTB program and develop a series of recommendations to improve the administration of the program. That included uh, coordination between the Arizona Department of Transportation and Arizona State Parks. It's notable that Arizona State Parks and the Arizona Department of Transportation were so welcoming to his input to improve the program that most of the review recommendations had, have already been implemented. Lane is a passionate champion for effective stewardship of federal programs for transportation and recreation projects that benefit the public, and we're delighted to recognize him as the winner of the 2017 Legends Award for the Federal Highway Administration. Congratulations, Lane. Thank you very much, Derek. Uh, <clears throat> Lane is one, in the Federal Highway Administration, we have a federal aid office in every 
state, a federal aid division office in every state. I, unfortunately, I don't see my federal lands colleagues here. I was hoping they would be here as well. <coughs> but we have federal aid office in every state. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we have, uh, in people like Lane, we have the ability to work well with our state resource agencies, with state transportation departments. And I have always been very happy when I see his phone number show up and it's like, yes, I'm gonna get a good question and it's a, a reason to think. So you've made me think a lot, which I really appreciate. Uh, but we have a good partnership. And I have other division heroes, but Lane rose to the top this year. So really, thank you very much. The Federal Highway Administration, you know, we care more about transportation. People say, well, what are you doing here? This is a recreation conference. Well, the fact is, if we can't integrate our transportation and recreation infrastructure in an effective manner, not, not what I was saying is we do need to integrate our transportation and recreation infrastructure in an inappropriate manner. And that way we can really have a win-win that we all win. And Lane has been part of helping us to do that. So I appreciate it. And as you see in the picture, my hair is a little bit longer. Uh, it's still gray. Yeah. My uh, ex-wife came down with cancer, and so to support her, I cut all my hair off. And, and, I, and she's doing well. The, uh, the Federal Aid Highway Program is best known as a federally assisted state transportation program. So what we always try to, to personify is that it's not the federal highway. It's the state program. And by assisting it with dollars and technical expertise, that's how we help promote the various programs that we have. And they've tried to bestow as much as they can on me, which is fine. Uh, I retired in November after 18 years, and, and it's been wonderful. Uh, I really don't want to go, but it's time. The, uh, I accept this uh, very humbly, which is a word everybody's been using. When I was nominated for it, that was, it, it took my breath away. And <laughs> when they said I got it, I had no breath left. <laughs> so the, the uh, accolades actually should go to ADOT and Arizona State Parks and Trails. They changed their name this year to Arizona State Parks and Trails because they have Mickey Rogers there that came in from Maine, and he is a breath of fresh air. He's wonderful, great ideas, and where I come into play, which I think is a minor role, is to help him do what he does. When he wants to change the program, when he wants to add some things to it, he always calls me and I said, absolutely. And then when he goes to his, to his superiors, he said, I talked to Lane, he's in support of it. So that's all it really takes for us to get the program moving in a very positive manner I've been there for 13 years. They know that I'm not a hindrance, I'm a help with it. And that's what we all should be as our federal partners, that we supply dollars, we supply technical su support, and in some cases from what I've been hearing from some of the other recipients, a whole lot more than that. But I do accept this on behalf of the others within the state. And I do wanna say that this is, they want an award too. And this is the first time that I've, I've known of, and I keep asking, that the state and the federal partner got it the same year. <laughs> and and I, nobody can say whether that's ever occurred or not, but it is the state that does the work. They are, they're the ones that I'm proud of, and Mickey and Sean Hammond. Uh, but anyway, I could keep going on for 20 minutes. But <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. To fill in the, the dots there, what Lane's referring to is that every year the Coalition for Recreational Trails teams up with the National Association of State Park Directors and others representing the entire recreational trails community in this country and honors one state trail program with the best of the, the country award. And that this year will be presented to Arizona in about two weeks. So it is a team effort and we congratulate Lane for his role in making that Arizona State Trail Program be the national recipient. So congratulations. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay, now the, uh, 
The last award is, is something that I'm trying to figure out. If I don't announce this award, can we put off some impending July 3 activity and just have him hang around to see if, you know, maybe he could get it in a, you know, 2019 or 2020 or something like that. Um, as you probably recognize, the agency that we have yet to honor a Legends Award recipient for 2017 is the Forest Service. And we are delighted to have the Deputy Chief of the Forest Service, Leslie Weldon, as well as the recipient of the award for the Forest Service this year, Joe Mead, with us. So Joe and Leslie and Heather, please come up on stage. All right, how do we summarize what Joe Mead is? Well, let me make a little stab at it. First of all, he's the Director of Recreation, Heritage, and Volunteer Resources for the Forest Service, a position he's held since 2013. During his tenure, Joe has worked passionately to actualize a sustainable recreation agenda that contributes over $10 billion to the national economy and supports nearly 150,000 jobs. He's also helped the Forest Service deepen and strengthen connections to communities working tirelessly to assist the agency to show up differently when, when, where people live, work, and play. His leadership in implementing high five shifts in selecting valuing outdoor experiences demonstration areas is, is expanding the Forest Service's relevance to the public. It serves today and will serve for many years in the future. Above, above all else, he is an enthusiastic idea person. He's able to see the broad picture, its many parts, and develop creative actions for solving problems. He's a communicator, a collaborator, a networker, a diplomat. He lends leadership to those projects he's involved with, as well as honesty, integrity, and candor with a style that inspires individuals to reach their full potential. In addition to his time with the agency's Washington office, Joe's natural resource career highlights include a seven-year stint as the forest supervisor on the Chugach National Forest in Alaska, five years as the Southwest Regional Director of Recreation, Heritage, and Wilderness Resources, and seven years in national headquarters as the National Developed Sites Recreation Program Leader. As the Chugash Forest Supervisor, Joe's shared stewardship uh, secured and invested more than $6 million in outside revenue, leveraged more in-kind partnerships, and contributed to vibrant relations relationships with surrounding communities and villages. As the National Accessibility Program Leader for Universal Design, Joe was responsible for the development and the implementation of the agency's Universal Accessibility Program and pioneered national design standards now guiding universal accessibility design of all outdoor recreation sites, facilities, and services. These standards are now used internally and externally to the agency. Throughout his 40-year career in the management and conservancy of public lands for the Forest Service, Joe has championed ideas and practices that have made the national forests and grasslands the country's top provider of quality recreation opportunities and experiences. Joe, we're so delighted to congratulate you on your achievement-filled career as a Forest Service legend uh, we're delighted to have Heather here, your wife, to, to be a part of this presentation. We know how you work as a team. And so let me at this time ask you to join in honoring Joe as our Legends Award recipient. <laughs> Well, Deputy Chief Weldon, I don't envy you. Um, 
either in trying to summarize the good things I know you want to say, or in filling in behind Joe. Whoa. <laughs> <sighs> I am not going to add much because, um, you know, we were so happy, you know, and, and, and glad you're all celebrating with us to be able to um, put up this uh, citation uh, for Joe, all of us. And so not only you in this room, but he's backed by, I would say, uh, deep friends, um, colleagues, people who respect him. Um, all across the country, you know, and all those places that he was, he left an impact, not just because he um, made, cha made lasting change in a positive way wherever he went, but he also did that with the people that he worked with. So the things that I will add in is, um, uh, you know, other than expressing my very, very deep gratitude and, and privilege to be a colleague with Joe, he sometimes says I'm his boss, but you know, we do things together, is to really talk about a person who can um, activate and, and live his vocation through every moment of his life, you know, which is something that we truly see. That has to do with um, a, a deeply valued-based person. Uh, he values every person. He values the capacity that every person can have and can contribute. Uh, but at the same time, he's a person that will not hesitate to put the challenges in front of us um, and not just say it and walk away. He'll be there to make sure that what we need to do happens done in a quality way with everyone, you know, being able to contribute uh, for us to do our very best work possible together. Um, and he's a loving person for everyone. And I think that makes the, the biggest difference in, you know, how we feel about the work we do um, and uh, the, the people he serves, the public, uh, if they knew he was there, they would be very highly supportive of uh, the work we do in the federal government. And so, Joe, I just want to offer my um, love back to you, uh, my great depth of appreciation and pride on behalf of the Forest Service and all of us in this room here, and um, know that you're going to share some nice words with us now because I'm going to give you the mic because I don't want to start crying. <laughs> How many of us get to be surrounded by such fantastic women in our lives? <laughs> you know, well, thank you. Our nation has such a rich, rich, rich legacy in our public lands, our partners and our volunteers. And I, I really am humbled and flattered to receive this legend award, but it's really on behalf of those four spheres of influence. First of all, the real legends in the Forest Service, so those folks out in the field. Jason, put your hand up. You know, the artisan and residency program we heard about yesterday, that's wow, and that's people making a difference in communities. And then, and then there's Joe with the, uh, the health program there in the Tahoe Basin, connecting trails and setting in a sense of place to the health and recovery and partnership as we heard about yesterday. Those are legends. Scott Fitzwilliams, who we'll hear about a little bit later, a forest supervisor that gets it. He's out in the field, he's making a difference. Four season ski resorts that really provide enhanced services that really make a difference to our visitors, to our guests. Those are the things that make our nation's public lands a rich legacy. But it's also the partners in this room who I've worked so closely with. Our concessions, our ski area operators, our outfitters and guides. You know, these are the folks that bring those benefits and services to our guests that are showing up and looking to take home memories and fun experiences. So it's our partners and it's our volunteers. Incredibly important. It's also my immediate staff. And if you're in here in the Washington office, would you just stand up? These are the other legends they put up with me. <laughs> and a couple of you I'll get back even on this with too. <laughs> and last, it's leadership. I've had the benefit of working for legendary leadership. There's a lot of things that each of us can do, and Derek, you know this too, going back to the Dale Robertson's days of really bold leadership they started Partners Outdoors, along with a few other, you know, other agencies, whoever they might be. But, but Leslie, for me, it's leadership. 
I've had the opportunity to serve side by side with you as you really challenge an agency to look back at itself and to reflect and ask itself, why is it that uh, we're about timber and, and grazing and minerals? And, and yet, what about that GDP of 10 b -b -b billion? What about outdoor, valuing outdoor experiences? And you led that diagnostic so that we could rediscover of ourselves what we could be. And it's taken us down a path to modernizing our special uses so we might show up better with our partners in this room. It's led us down a path of valuing our volunteers so that we would really see that they're the relevancy to our public lands. It's brought Rick DeLapp and others forward in helping make our digital connection real and alive. It's recognizing our citizen roads and trails are how folks get access to. We talked about access with Interior this morning. Hey, we're all about access. <laughs> and last, it's our iconic places. And so this legendary award is really reflective of legendary leadership. So with that, I'm gonna give this back to Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Freeze, you have to stay right here. You know, when we talk about partners, Joe is the real deal. There is just no, no question. But he believes to his inner self about the importance of working uh, with partners. And uh, Joe, if you'll remain up here, we're going to do something we've never done before. Uh, we're going to delay this, this uh, Legends presentation because we're not finished. We have a contingent from the National Forest Recreation Association that has traveled here from across the country to recognize you as well. And I'd like to invite Steve Warner, Eric Mart, Kevin Garden, and Warren Meyer, and Tricia Spear to come up for an NAFRA presentation to Joe. So, Joe. This is violation of special use permit clause number three. three oh, yeah, five. sure, sure. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, thank you, Derek, for allowing us to um, uh, piggyback onto the Legend Award. Congratulations on your, uh, your nomination and election to the Legend of the Forest Service. It's just outstanding. You're, it's well deserved, for sure. So, Joe is. Uh, been a, a wonderful partner for the National Forest Recreation Association. We are a group of uh, business folks that, that do partnership um, activities with the Forest Service as a concessionaire or outfitter, guides, uh, resorts, um, and various other businesses. So we have uh, enjoyed Joe's um, leadership and support. Anytime that we've had a challenge in the Forest Service, we've gone to Joe and said, Joe, help us navigate through the, uh, the challenges that are, that are meeting us. And uh, Joe has always been in, um, great at developing and uh, maintaining the positive relationship between um, the Forest Service and the various businesses. So um, we are just so grateful to have worked with you and we're so sorry to see that you're retiring. Uh, we got you a little retirement gift here. There's a uh, couple of uh, REI uh, stainless steel uh, mugs to keep your adult beverages cold or hot for you. <laughs> and then there's a little $300 gift certificate from REI in there also. Can't be over $25. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's right. Just, just put it on the shelf till June 3rd. That's right. Just wait till you're retired. Exactly right. Exactly right. Just don't open it. You'll be fine. Right. I never saw it in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't mean to rush you out the door. So, Joe, I also have a, um, a nice uh, plaque here from the National Forest Recreation Association, and let me read this to you. It says, it's a Lifetime Achievement Award. The National Forest Recreation Association is pleased to honor Joe Mead for your heartfelt dedication, commitment, and passion to outdoor recreation. You have been our partnership champion and for that we are very grateful. Your exemplary leadership in building and maintaining positive relationships has been immeasurable. You will always be held in the highest esteem. Congratulations on your retirement. We thank you, Joe. <laughs> 